Hi there and welcome. This is Patty Bennett with pattystamps.com. How exciting that you are sharing some crafting time with me today. I am so glad that you are here. We are going to be creating these really beautiful brusho backgrounds. And by brusho, I mean this. This is brusho crystal color. I'm going to show you how to use this. We are going to create these backgrounds, which is what I used to die cut the butterfly thinlet at, where you see here on these two cards. So after we create these, we're going to be creating some cards together. I'm going to give you several tips and I think you are going to love this. So hi, everybody. This is a Facebook Live on Tuesday, February, uh-oh, February what? What are we today? Fourth? Fifth? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, sorry. Should have looked. <laughs> and my name is Patty Bennett, and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm super excited to share these really unique backgrounds with you. And tomorrow you are going to find these cards as well as the tips and instructions and a replay of this Facebook Live on my blog, which is pattystamps.com. So if you need any further information about these projects or about Stampin' Up! or our products, then pattystamps.com is the place to go. And you can always click on contact me there if you need to contact me about something. Of course, you can always leave a comment here on the Facebook Live, or if you're watching on YouTube, you can leave a comment there. So yes, thank you. Um, Sandy has set me straight here. Today is the 5th. <laughs> Sorry about that. So on February 6th in the US, these cards and all this information will be on pattystamps.com. Thank you, everybody, for keeping me straight. <laughs> all righty. So welcome to everybody. I'm so glad that you are joining me. And I wanted to show you that these butterflies are featured all over the front of the occasions catalog. Do you see how pretty they are? And they're, they look like just single butterflies. But when you look here on page 13 in the catalog, you will see that the butterfly beauty thinlets are actually two large pieces. And when you die cut them, they cut out one, two, three, four, five, five butterflies each. So I will show you that in a minute. But on the cover, They've cut them apart, and that is the beauty of this die that you can use them singly or you can use them as one big piece. So here is the big piece that it would cut out if you just cut it out and you left it all connected. You can see right here, though, that I have cut this one out separately out of another piece of cardstock and added it to the top. So you can do different things with them. So we'll be making these cards or something very similar today. You probably remember we did these a while back, and this is the same butterfly thinlet, but done in gorgeous grape and Highland Heather cardstock, cut apart, and I used three of them on this card and two of them on this card. So this was a video and post, oh, I don't know, three-ish weeks ago, maybe? If you go to my blog and you type in butterfly in the search bar, this should come up pretty close to the top. But that is how it might look if you layered two colors of cardstock. We are going to be layering a brush o background with a piece of cardstock. So I hope that you enjoy this. I'm, I'm sorry, I just looked over here and I saw that there were several comments flashing by and I missed them. But I do hope that you'll enjoy this. And I'm going to check your comments at the end so that if you have questions, I will encourage you to um, repeat them at the end if I don't see them as we are creating. So basically, with these backgrounds, you can see that I have a couple different things. I have blues, greens, and yellows happening on these. So actually, those three. And then I have oranges, reds, and yellows happening here. Then I'm going to show you the difference of why these look so different. And this one as well, very 
deep, dark, and a little more muddied, I guess would be the word. So I'm going to show you as we create these, the differences and how you get these different looks. And I did see one comment go by saying that they're pretty messy. Well, I'm going to give you a couple of solutions to hopefully help that and to make you not worry about the mess. <laughs> so what I like to do, and this is really just kind of silly, but I went to the dollar store and I got these um, pans. They're like lasagna pans, I guess. Two for a dollar. I just keep reusing them and I use them to work with brusho. And then I just go rinse it out in the sink. And then that way I can keep reusing it. It contains any of the splash or the, the spray, I should say, from the brusho. And that's just how I do it. So I have here the Stampin' Up! watercolor paper. It actually comes in a six inch by nine inch sheet in a pack of five large pieces. So I have cut them down so that they are like card front size, but also it's the, just the perfect size to fit the, um, the butterfly die. And that's what we're going to be doing the brusho background on. And then I will show you how I die cut them and layer them onto the card. So this is what I like to use when I use the brush show. It keeps it all contained. It doesn't spray around on my desk and it's just really um, handy and inexpensive. So in my Stampin' Spritzer, I've got water. I am going to show you that you can also do this with rubbing alcohol. So when you are working with water and watercolor paper, if you just spritz and you just um, get one side wet, your paper is going to curl up. So you have two choices. Number one, you could take a piece of heavy cardboard and some painter's tape or washi tape and tape down the paper all the way around to a separate piece. And then that will keep it flat while you're working. Or you can do this tip that I learned from my dad, who is a watercolor artist and who is amazing. And I did inherit my love of color and composition and art and everything from him. However, I can't draw anything freehand to save my life. So I use rubber stamps. <laughs> so here's the tip. So you take water and you spritz all over one side, and then we're going to flip it over and we're actually going to work on the other side. So then we're going to spritz this side. And by spritzing both sides, it's going to keep the paper flat or relatively flat. It's going to be pretty flat. So let's do uh, like a red, orange, yellow first. So here's the brush -o. Comes in this cute little container. And the only thing you need to do is poke a hole with a pin. That's all you need. Do not take the lid off or you will have enough for like 9,000 cards. So there's just a pin prick hole in there. I keep the push pin in it when I store it so that if it tips over, it doesn't come out. And then we are just going to tap, tap, tap. And you can see that it's reacting with the water and it's spreading. So now I'm going to grab the yellow. And a little bit goes a long way. I think you could probably put these in your will. I'm not sure that you will ever use this up unless you just like use it nonstop every day all the time. Then you might someday use it up. <laughs> So that is just red and yellow. That's that's all I did on there. And you can see we already have such a gorgeous background. Isn't it beautiful? Now, one thing I wish I could do is figure out the secret to actually making a background like this, like with reinkers, with aqua painters, whatever. I can I am never super successful with that. But with the brush o I really love how this turns out. I think it is gorgeous. It's just very organic and different and beautiful each time. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of the gamboge. This is kind of a, a red orange, rusty red orange. And since that paper had started to dry, what we could do is we could go back with more water. Or what I'm going to do is I have my champagne mist um, shimmer paint 
mixed with rubbing alcohol in a different spritzer. And I have it labeled so that I won't ever get confused. And I'm going to spritz with that for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's going to make it shimmery, which is always beautiful. And number two, because the alcohol is not going to make the paper as wet. It's a lot of that liquid is going to evaporate and then it won't be as wet. And I told you I would tell you the difference over here. So with this one, it basically was almost the exact same thing as this, but I put way too much water. And you can see that it just ran, 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 ran. And I had more of a muddy look on this one. Now it's still gonna make a beautiful background for something, I will use it. But I just wanted to show you the difference. So you kind of wanna stop and not put too much liquid on. So I think in these parts that still look a little bit wet, I'm going to sprinkle just a little more of the red and let that just soak in. And it's going to give a little more intense color in those two spots. So that is all there is to making one of these backgrounds. I mean, I just, I think this is super duper amazing. And then what I do is I just have an old pair of tweezers here and I will pick this up and I'm just setting it off to the side here to dry. And then I'm going to do a green, blue, yellow one for you. But I'm going to grab my other pan because I don't want any of that red and yellow to transfer onto this or we will have a very odd color. <laughs> okay, so remember, spritz the back first. Get the back wet. Flip it over. You can do that with your fingers or with the tweezers. And we're going to get the front wet. And remember, the more water, the more that this is going to soak in. Oh, and we're out of water, so I get to show you my handy-dandy tip. I have this hair color applicator bottle, and I have one with water and one with rubbing alcohol. And I just keep it. <laughs> Isn't that cute? I just keep it right here. And it's a great way to fill up my spritzers without having to leave my project and get up and go to the bathroom sink or the kitchen sink. Because, you know, that might be like 40 steps away. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so let's take the blue, the Prussian blue, and a little of this, you can see, goes a super long way. You don't need a lot of the darker colors. And then let's take some moss green. And then I'm going to add yellow. And isn't this fun how every time you work with this, you are going to get a really different outcome. It is not going to be the same. I mean, I guess you could really, really, really try to get it the same, but it's really not going to turn out the same. So I'm grabbing a paper towel because I can see that this is, this is pretty wet right there. So just going to soak up some of that extra liquid and then put a little more of the brush o there. And then I will take my Champagne mist. Oh, I just saw a question go by. This is watercolor paper. So we are going to just spritz with some of the uh, champagne mist mixed with the rubbing alcohol to give this a little bit of shimmer and to just not add quite as much water. And I'm just going to just soak up just those couple of spots that were really wet. Now I can see. Here's what you want to look for. Do you see right there? We have a lot of powder that's still quite dry and I don't want that to stay there because it's not soaked in and it will, um, it will just remain as dry powder. And then when you're done, you'll have just this dry powder sitting there on your project, which I don't want. I want it to all soak in. So there you go. We've done the red, orange, yellow, and now we have 
the green, blue, yellow. We have our backgrounds now. So now let's create. Okay, just going to set these aside so that they will be drying. And we can do some creating. I will bring in so here is, this was one of those that was really dark. You can see it was very similar to this one. And so I used the, actually, I, I have two of them ready to pop out here. I wanted to show you. So I used this die. There are two dies, and I'll show you how they layer. I used this die to die cut this. And so then you can see, here is what you get. And I did spritz this with my... Um, champagne mist mixed with rubbing alcohol because I didn't spray this piece at all with the, the shimmer mist and I really wanted it to be shimmery. I don't know if the shimmer comes across at all on the camera, but you can trust me that it is gorgeous in person. So that would be that piece. Then I just wanted to show you. So this one was another piece and I I didn't pop it out yet. So I was just going to use my my brush with my foam mat and just release some of that. So now we have this one. So this one has a little more of the yellow and a uh, green. It almost turns into um like a Bermuda Bay-ish color in there or a Tranquil Tide when you get those colors all mixed. Okay, so you can see we have a darker one and a lighter one. And then let's pop this one out. And this one with this die looks like this. Now I still have some pieces yet to pop out and I can do that when I'm ready to put it on my project. But there you have an example of the red, orange, yellow. So let's just take a quick look. If you haven't worked with these two dies and if you haven't um, seen the other video I did where I showed you why there are two. So this one cuts out a little more intricate and this one cuts out the one that has much um, wider borders in the background and you can totally use these separately if you wanted to so here this card uses this die just by itself obviously different color but i just put this die on the card and that's what you would get this one uses this more intricate die on top of one of these dies. So let me grab one of these. And yes, I know all the pieces aren't poked out. I'll tell you why in just a minute. So if you layer, isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh, I am in love. So gorgeous. So let's cover this so you don't get confused here. So this one is actually layered, an intricate one onto the background one. And I wanted to show you, give you a couple tips of what happens when you layer these like this, because they're just so stunning. All right, plop these out of the way. And let's work on this piece back here. Wanted to show you a tip that I did on this card. So I took some sponge daubers and some ink pads. So let me grab, excuse me for reaching, Coastal Cabana. And actually, I don't know if Balmy Blue is going to show up on that one. I grabbed it, but now I'm not sure. So let's just see. Let's use Coastal Cabana first. So what I want to show you is that you can change the color of one or more of the butterflies. So now we have a little bit darker. And then if you were to use this piece on top, 
you can see it looks like a totally different butterfly back there, but all I did was use some extra color. On this one, I actually pieced on some, I did a crushed curry one, and I cut off those two butterflies down here, put them on top of the pool party, and put one on top of the pool party of that one. So it looked like I had lots of colors. I was just like mixing and matching it. So there's just a couple of different ways that you can use those. So I started over here. I grabbed a couple of embossing folders and some extra paper, and I started to just kind of play. And I want to bring that in and show you some ideas of what you might want to do. Oh, and don't let me forget to talk about this because I used that in the card as well. So I started here with, um, uh, what do I have in the background? Pool party, right? I think. Is that right? Hang on. Coastal Cabana. Sorry, sorry. Coastal Cabana card stock on the background. Pool party here and then crushed curry here. So I put layered those on together. And then what I thought I would do is to layer one of these on top of it. So obviously I'm going to cut these two off, use them on a separate project. Let's see how the darker one looks. I think I like this one. Would that be, I think that would be gorgeous. Yes. And I think I'll leave this one on. So I'm going to cut the top two off. So all you do is just snip these apart and then you can use these two on a different project. Okay, so we're not going to toss them. We could even put them on the inside of the card. That might be really pretty. What do you think? I think that would be really cool. So what I'm going to do to attach this is I am going to use my multi-purpose liquid glue, my silicone sheet, and a sponge dauber. And I'm just going to squeeze out some of the multi-purpose glue on there. And I'm going to use my sponge dauber. I'm actually going to hold this down with my tweezers so that I don't get glue all over my fingers. And I'm just going to dab some glue on the back. Now you might be saying, oh dear, she should have used the multi-purpose adhesive sheet. I wasn't sure if that would be too thick with the watercolor paper. So that's why I didn't do it with the watercolor paper. I had a feeling that that might be a little bit too thick going through my big shot. I did use the multi-purpose adhesive sheet on the back of this cardstock prior to um, die cutting it. Now, the other advantage to using the multi-purpose liquid glue for this layer is that it gives you a couple seconds to kind of smush it around and line it up. If I had put the multi-purpose adhesive sheet on this detailed one and then I stuck it down, but it was crooked, I would have been sunk. There would have been no way that I could have moved it around. Well probably no way without, you know, ripping it. But what do you think? Isn't that cool? I think that turned out beautiful. I like that a lot, a lot. So let's just do one here. Let's see. Oh, that one gets lost on that color. Let's see. Would we need to do it maybe on, maybe on, oh, that would be pretty, wouldn't it? I like that. I like that. So we could put, we could layer this one on here. And you know what though? I want to spritz it with shimmer mist first before I put it on. So I think I won't layer it on there yet, but we'll, I'll save that. I am going to work on that. I think that's beautiful. That would be really cute. So let's see if we, what do you think? What do you think? I think that could be really pretty. I think that could be, no. 
Do you ever do that? Do you grab a whole bunch of different colors and try different colors to see? Ooh, I kind of like, that's really jazzy. That's too blah. That might work. That might work. Would we want, nope. We wouldn't want, oh, that's a sneak peek. I need to show you that in a second. Oh, that might be pretty. Hmm. I don't know. I think, I think, I'm kind of thinking that might be really cool. And then maybe on, let's see, maybe a Coastal Cabana card in the background. Shall we try that? You want to do that? I, while I'm putting this together, I did see a comment go by. What is my secret to getting the butterflies out of the dies? Okay, so one thing that Stampin' Up! shared uh, quite some time ago, and I've been doing it ever since they had this on a video, is they used the die. So let's say we're going to die cut this piece, okay? So normally you would do this and you would put your plate and your sandwich and run it through the big shot. What they do is they flip this upside down, but then you still have your clear plate and your clear plate and your big shot platform with the thin die adapter. That sandwich really helps when you have anything that's intricate and you can see how mine just popped out and they, they worked really easily. So that is my secret. And I'll say that one more time while I'm adding this. So you use the big shot platform with the thin die adapter you put your clear plate on top, and then when you are ready to put your paper and your die, you, you layer them together, but you flip them upside down, and then you put your clear plate on top, and you run it through the big shot, and then it really helps to get the, all those little intricate pieces cut, and if you need to, if you, um, because you're not using the magnetic platform, I take a little sticky post-it and I'll do this so that as I flip it, nothing moves. So you might need to do that if you are having trouble with it moving. So I'm glad you asked that. So, oh, you know what? I just noticed this one was a scrap that didn't quite fit. So I don't want to use that one because that butterfly isn't complete. So We'll use that on something else. So we're going to use this one. So on the back of here is the multi-purpose adhesive sheet. And the reason I wasn't too worried about a lot of these pieces coming out is because when you pull the multi-purpose adhesive sheet off, it does tend to take a lot of these little pieces with it. So do you see how it took off a lot of those extra pieces? And then we just have a couple of them in here. Well, okay, more than a couple, but they still just pop right out. So we're just going to pop those out before we stick this onto the cardstock. Ah, now it's stuck to my fingers. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Oh, blue. yes, blueberry bushel. Somebody was asking what color. That is blueberry bushel, and it is embossed with the swirls and curls embossing folder. Okay, now they're stuck to my fingers. Hang on, I'll get them off. <laughs> Crafting live, that's what happens, right? All right, you don't see all the behind the scenes stuff that, that happens when crafting. So I'm going to pull out a couple of those other little pieces once this gets stuck on because I need to get these unstuck from my fingers. There we go. And then I can just pop some of these out. If you don't have a paper piercing tool or the pick your tool, then you need that because it is fantastic and great for so many different little uses, especially something like this. Okay, a couple more. A little sneaky one in there. Okay, and then we will do the glue again on this piece. So we'll just squeeze that out. 
And you can either use a sponge dauber or you can use um, the sponge like this, like a quarter of a sponge. I kind of like the sponge dauber for this because I do like it to be a little more controlled. Hang on, I see some some stragglers here that are not going to make me happy. Just poke these out. I probably should have tried the multi-purpose adhesive sheet on the back of the watercolor paper, but I was just a little scared. I just didn't know if it would, um, you know, jam in the big shot or I don't know. It just scared me a little bit. I know I should just try it because it's just paper, but I also know that this will work. So we'll go with this. All right. Now we'll add this one. Like I said, though, I do really like the fact that I can move this around so that it lines up perfectly. And with the multi-purpose glue, it gives you that opportunity. Whereas with the adhesive sheet, it would not have done that. It would have stuck down and then you would have been like, ah, it's there forever. I like that. I like that a lot. And since I didn't use the champagne mist on that before I stuck it down, I will just give it a 